Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to correct a panorama and how to get this desaturated look of this photo of Big Sur. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Romilly. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful, the romantic, but the very cold city of Paris, France, and the sunny city of Los Angeles, California. I make one to two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to get the raw files of this episode. This week is going to be two nice Sony A7R 46 million pixel raw file of Big Sur, California. I'm going to show you how I shot the photos, how I corrected them in Photoshop, and how I got this specific look. Or you can click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at, at PhotoSurge. All right, so let me take you to Big Sur, California, where I was last week. Now I'm back in Paris. And to show you how I retouched this photo. All right, so I want to show you another composition which I think is interesting. And um, this is the MC Way Falls in Big Sur, California. It's a beautiful beach. I've done already a tutorial on it, which you can see the link here uh, and or in the description of the video if you're watching this on a mobile. But the, the, the first time I went there, I had an amazing sunset. So I want to show you just another, another composition that I did, another technique and another type of retouching, which could be interesting in case you don't have a nice sunset. Because the solution is not always to go black and white. There are some other things you can do. So my idea was this, uh, th this, um, this beach is amazing because you've got a little waterfall on the beach. I actually put an ND filter on, um, so I had a 1.3 second of exposure um, at uh, F13, ISO 100. I wanted this 1.3 because I wanted the wave to, uh, to stretch out a little bit. So I took this one photo, uh, this one I shot it at uh, 35 millimeter with my 1635. This is the second photo. Oh, sorry. This is uh, this. Sorry. This is the first photo, and this is the second photo. Okay. And basically, what I did is I just went into. I selected both photo. I went into Edit, Photo Merge, Panorama. So it's two photos of 35 millimeter. Now I was with a 1635 and I could have got wider angles, but when I did that, the waterfall became very, very small, even smaller than this. So sometimes you're better off to taking two photos at 35 than one photo at 20. It's just a matter of composition. I didn't want, I didn't want this rock to be huge. I didn't want this waterfall to be very small, which is what would have happened at 20 millimeter. So. I'm going to use a cylindrical. Now, I've already prepared this. Uh, that's the final result. Now, remember, if you're new to Lightroom CC, you've got this amazing option where you can do panoramas with RAW file, and they stay a RAW file, meaning you only start the retouching once you've done the panorama, which I'm about to do. So, uh, the problem with this panorama is we're missing some sky here, and we have a problem is that I want to play around with this, with this rocks here for composition. But first, let's do a basic retouching. So, I'm going to open up the shadows and bring down the highlights. Uh, then I'm going to hold on the Alt key and do my blacks. Nice dramatic black. And then I'm going to do my white. Okay, something like this. So I'm going to do a minus clarity because when you do that, it just makes it more natural for a minus clarity. Now, I don't like the colors at all. And I can go to shade and, and add some color. And it's just, you know, maybe add some magenta. And it's just it's not really cool. So one thing you can do when you don't have any colors, and that's what I'm going to do, is you can just lower your saturation, but not all the way to go black and white, about something like this, about like minus 40. And you get like one of this sort of, uh, like, okay, minus 40 on this one. You get a sort of like a, uh, a look. It's not really black and white. It's not really colors, but I think it's an interesting look, okay? But now we need to solve a lot of issues with this photo with the perspective. So for this, I'm going to jump into our friend Photoshop and uh, right click, edit, edit in Adobe Photoshop 16. Just as a little note, if you don't have Photoshop or Lightroom, if you go to my website, photosearch.com and you click on my gear, you will see we have an authorized affinity partner with Adobe. That means that you can get Lightroom and Photoshop for seven dollars eight dollars per month you get 20 percent off if you go through the website so it's seven dollars 99 instead of 9.99 you can click here and you get lightroom and photoshop on a subscription basis for the price of two copies two coffees per month at starbucks and probably even toll not the big coffee just small coffee you can get lightroom and photoshop isn't that crazy 
All right, so here's the photo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the layer here. I always like to have a copy. And you see, I want to play around. With, I love this rocks here and what it does uh, to the lone exposure. So let me zoom out. And I'm going to press Command-T on my keyboard. Okay, Command T on the keyboard is the free transform tool. And then I'm going to hold on my Alt, my Command key or my Control key if you're on Windows. And you see this little handle? I'm going to play around with them. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to force the exposure here like this. But not too much because I want to get these rocks here to be the bottom of my photo. So just a little bit like this. I'm going to make this maybe like that. There is a little round here. The horizon is wrong, which is fine. I'm not gonna, it doesn't really bother me on this photo. I know some people hate that, but I personally don't. Okay. So something like, I just play around. I just compose the photo like how I want because it's an, anyway, this whole landscape is such an arbitrary shape, you know. Uh, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna press enter. It's gonna transform. Let me show you the before and after. Not a huge deal. And then I'm gonna basically take my magic wand tool make sure that uh, contiguous is off Th this way i can click on on this areas here and anywhere i'm missing pixel it's going to be selected then i'm go i'm going to go to select modify expand i'm going to expand this of about 50 pixel which was and then i'm going to press shift delete when you press shift delete on photoshop madame monsieur something crazy happens the fill window opens and here you can choose between different options i'm going to take the content aware and press ok and what that's going to do is that it's going to fill in the missing information for me based on the surrounding most of the time it does a pretty spot on job this algorithm came out a couple of years ago and it's magic it's magic in the air i can tell you that right now so let's see what uh, sometimes you have to you know it doesn't always work this is actually a huge photo because it is two times 46 million pixel so it's a big photo that's why you know it's taking a bit of time command d to undo okay something is weird here a bit in the sky okay that's fine we're gonna correct that and uh yeah all right so let me but i'm anyway gonna recrop the photo a lot because i really want to be closest as possible on the maybe just a little bit here okay and um, this this way is fine this way is all right okay see I think that's the crop I'm going for this is the crop you're looking for okay cool all right that's the crop now there's a bit of stone repeating itself so you can take the stem tool S for stem tool use the control and up option to make it bigger and you see that's that stone has been repeated so i'm going to take that out well now that has been repeated so i'm going to take that out a little bit and just i'm just playing around with stem tool to make it more random okay that's cool we see a bit of the horizon which is like this but that doesn't really disturb me i like the composition now so i'm going to go file close i'm going to re-import this into lightroom okay so here i am in lightroom and now i'm ready for double developing uh, all I'm going to do is I want to I like the, I like these rocks here and I want to put more emphasis on it. So I'm going to take this brush tool, I'm going to go on the exposure, and I'm going to paint here on the water. Just so I just want to show you something that's very important. See my brush is at 86. Oh, feather should be 100. That's a mistake. Flow 70, density 73. That's pretty cool. And then I'm going to boost a little bit the value really want to make this a little bit brighter and then i'm going to paint maybe here no it's too much command z to undo so that brush stroke just did that i'm going to click on new to make it another brush stroke just for this part here but i don't want the same value see the value is not as strong i don't want something like this i want something blah, blah, blah. and then maybe here make my brush smaller using the middle wheel on my mouse and make this a, a, a bit more attention on that on that waterfall Okay, I'm going to press new and then I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to minus the exposure on my brush and I'm going to mix this darker. I don't want uh, people to have attention on this part of the photo. But you know why? Because it's boring. That part is boring. So, you know, with light, you can direct people's eyes. It's not a huge deal. Let me show you the before and after, the brush strokes before, after. But I'm just directing the viewer's eyes. I think the, the, the top is too bright. So let's add a little graded filter, maybe. Something like this. Voila. And I'm going to recrop the photo because I think this sky is not really nice here. So I'm just going to crop this out. Let's see what if, if I crop like this. Yeah. 
that's perfect. This way we don't even see that the horizon is not straight. And we are more onto the waterfall and everything. So what I kind of look, it's kind of like a desaturated look that I kind of like. And I do it when the colors are not nice. And I think it really works well on this photo. Well, I hope you learned something. Uh, you have the raw files. You know, if you sign up to my website, you can play around with this. And if you want to learn more about Photoshop, I really advise you to check out my course, Photoshop for Photographer, and uh, which is on my website. Here is a little trailer on Photoshop for Photographer that you can find. And I hope you enjoy this. Thank you so much for being there. And I will see you in another episode. All right, so this is my course, Photoshop for Photographer. What it is exactly, it's a five hours course where I'm gonna take you into all of Photoshop. Let me show you a little bit what I mean. Uh, we're gonna start off by using looking at Camera Row and we're gonna do a different project where we're gonna really explore all the actions of fo Camera Row to really retouch your photo before going into Photoshop, okay? Once we've done that, we're gonna start with simple Photoshop exercise, adding some clouds, changing completely radically photos with adding more clouds, uh, digital blending to get really all the details of a photo out, using layers to get really natural and compelling results. Then we're gonna do some HDR, natural HDR, crazy HDR, and then we're gonna do black and white, get into like really artistic black and white, boom. I give you all the raw files. Oh, this one is really cool. This one is about erasing all kind of small elements in a photo to really just make your landscape pop. And last, we're gonna take this gentleman, this guy, and do a final, plus this long panorama, and do this final composite into one small photo. Voila, that's my course, Photoshop for Photographer. Hope you like it. Check it out. You can get 30% off if you use the code PLP238. PLP238. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Do you want to get hundreds of raw files from all over the place where you can play around with? Do you want to get amazing free Lightroom presets, free brushes, free Photoshop actions? All you have to do is enter your email address. You will receive an email. You can then create an account and then you can access this free lesson tab. You can choose from over 200 and free lessons. Every free lesson is going to have source files for you to download and play around with. It's a great way to learn photography, learn post-processing for nothing. No money, it's all free. It's a gift to you as a member of photosearch.com. So thank you and welcome and let's do some photos together.